this video, we're going to begin looking at the common drilling operations, including spot drilling, drilling using a peck drilling cycle, and tapping. If you plan on following along, I'm working with part 7.11. We're going to start with the spot drilling operation. If we use a large enough spotting drill, we can actually use it to create a countersink on the finished hole. To insert our spotting operation, we're going to begin by selecting Drilling. Under Drilling, we can select Drill. The first thing we need to do is pick our spotting drill from the library. So select Library, select tool number 2 which is our quarter inch 90 degree spotting drill and press Select. With the tool selected, we can move on to the Geometry tab. When we're using a spot drill to produce a conical face, for the geometry we will then select the countersink as it's modeled in SolidWorks. So let's go ahead and select the three countersinks. Unlike other operations, the toolpath is generated immediately. In the toolpath, we can see a straight line that indicates the center point of the drill and where the drill stops. The larger blue circle indicates the full diameter of the drill at its lowest point in the operation. Because we're simply using this operation to produce the countersunk holes, the full diameter does not make it into the stock. With that said, let's select OK to insert our first drilling operation. For the second drilling operation, we're going to do a peck drilling cycle for these two holes. Again, we're going to begin by selecting Drilling and Drill. Select the library and use the 149th drill, which is a clearance for number 6 screws. On the geometry tab, there's a number of ways we can define a hole. You could select a point, a circular edge, or a cylindrical surface. But keep in mind, like a contour, your selection also defines the depth of the operation so you want to select your geometry at the bottom of the hole. But I haven't made any selections yet, because there's an additional trick. If you select a cylindrical face, the drilling manager will automatically pick up the bottom of the hole. Below the hole selection box, checking Select Same Diameter will automatically find any holes on the part that have the same diameter and can be drilled in this same job setup. So with both of our holes selected, we can move on to the Heights tab. Even though we define the depth of the hole by selecting our conical face, at present the tip of the drill is going to stop at the bottom of the hole. But we actually want this hole to go all the way through the part. At the bottom of our Heights tab, we're going to select Drill Through Bottom. It's a good idea to drill beyond the bottom of the part. So we're going to set a breakthrough depth of 20 thousandths of an inch to ensure that our drill drills completely through the part and actually goes 20 thou beyond the bottom of the part. As a cautionary note, whenever you're drilling through the part, and this includes the tip of the drill going through the part, you want to make sure that your work holding is such that there's no way you're going to drill into the vise or machine table. Finally, on the Passes tab, we can define the cycle for our drilling operation. The default cycle is simply going to drill all the way down to the bottom and retract out. However, anytime you're drilling a hole that's deeper than the diameter of the drill, we want to use what's called a peck drilling cycle. So, from the cycle drop-down, we're going to select Deep Drilling Full Retract. This pecking cycle retracts out of the hole multiple times to ensure that the drill bit does not get clogged with chips. Please refer to the written portion of this training. For now, we're just going to go ahead and accept the defaults. 
and we're ready to move on to the tapped hole. But before we can run a tap into a hole, we need to first drill a hole with the tap drill. Now the tap drill isn't a special drill, it's simply a drill that produces the correct size diameter hole that we can cut our threads into. Again, to produce this hole, we're going to select Drilling and Drill, choose Library, and select our 106 thou diameter hole, which is the tap drill size for a 632 tap. If you'd like to find out tap drill sizes, you can refer to the tap drill chart, again, in the back of the written portion of this training. With our tool selected, let's move to the Geometry tab and select the bore for our tapped hole. And then move on to the Heights tab. On the Heights tab, we want to drill to the bottom of the hole, so we're going to select Drill Through Bottom. This ensures that the full diameter is drilled down to the bottom of that cylindrical face that we selected. Now again, we're going to go to the Passes tab and define this as a deep drilling operation. We can select OK, and we're ready to run the tap into the hole. Tapping is again performed with the drilling operation, so select Drilling and Drill. We're going to again select Library and choose our 632 tap for this operation. On the Geometry tab, we can again select that cylindrical bore and move on to the Heights tab. On the Heights tab, not only are we not going to drill through the bottom, I'm also going to give a bottom offset of 20 thousandths of an inch. The last thing that I want to do is run my tap into the bottom of a blind hole. It's almost a sure way to break a tap and cause a lot of grief at the machine. It's always a good idea to make sure your tap stops before the bottom of your drilled hole. That said, if your tap goes entirely through the part, you want to break through beyond the bottom of the part because the first few threads on your tap are not complete threads. So again, if it's a blind hole, you want to stop before the bottom of the hole, but if it's a through hole, then we're going to want to extend past the bottom of the part to ensure that you have clean threads through your entire part. The final thing that we need to do to make sure this is a tapping operation is move on to the Passes tab and change the cycle to Tapping. The tapping cycle will turn the tap in clockwise and then retract the tap back out of the hole counterclockwise. With our tapping cycle set, let's select OK. And with that, we've completed a spotting operation, a peck drilling operation, and a tapping operation. This concludes your introductory videos to 2D milling. You're now ready to complete your 2D milling projects.